there's a couple of different ways to place trades that, and it's really a trader's preference, right? There's the, there's the trading ladder, which I have here on the left. You could place trades directly on that. And then, and then there's the chart itself. You could place trades directly on the chart. But let's just start here really simply. The first thing I'm gonna cover here is a, it's a market order, right? And a market order is you, market order is gonna give you the best available price, right? It's the fastest way to go. Um, you don't have to wait in line. You just click on that market button. I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the buy column right now. And it sends an order to the exchange. Boom, you get your fill back and it's graphically represented right here in the dome. And so right now you see my yellow, the yellow flag here, that's the last traded price, 97 half. And the brown is a uh, uh, shaded area is the price that I got on my on my market order, right? So I bought a contract at 66, 97 and three quarters. And so it's there. And then down here, you see it's green. This means I'm long a contract because I bought it. And there's that number one, which means I'm long one contract. If my default was set at two, this would show a two. In this little white box here, you could change this. This shows you how many ticks you're up or down, or how many points you're up or down, or how much, or just by clicking on it, you could rotate through uh, your do the dollar amount you're up or down. This is the gross PL uh, or the percent. So you could set, you could just have that uh, demonstrate that to however you want. That's a market order. That's the simplest way to go. Let's talk about limit orders. In the trading layer, you can see limit orders that have already been placed by other traders in the book. 10 ticks below the last trader price, 10 ticks above, above the last trader price. These are the number of contracts that are resting at the CME group right now in their order book. So it's very transparent and you can see where they are and you can see where, you know, some of these numbers are bigger than others, right? At 95 half, we're at 183 contracts. So let's go ahead and place a limit order. Limit order, the definition is it at my price or better, right? So in this particular case, if I wanted to buy a contract, let's say I wanted to buy a contract at 66.96, I'm gonna click once in the buy column and it, it, go ahead, it sends that order to the exchange and um, it's graphically represented on the trading ladder. And right now it's one contract you could see and there's 140 contracts in line waiting to get filled at that price. That number's dynamic, it goes up or down. And you know, as you get closer to the front of the line, you, you will get filled faster if the market trades at 96 even. There's a chance you won't get filled, right? But if the, mar the market can't go through your price, if it goes through your price, you're guaranteed to fill, right? You're blocking the market at this point, right? So either it's gonna hit that price and not enough volume gets traded and it moves against you, or you get filled, it trades at that price, you get filled, or if it goes through it, you're, you're definitely gonna get filled. Now you might say, well, Jim, what if I wanna change my mind? What if I wanna move this to a different price? No problem. Let's say you wanna move it down two ticks. So you click on the label, you move your mouse down, you click again, and you just canceled and replaced that order, right? You canceled the order, you replaced it with this new order at a lower price. You're in the back of the line for this price, but it's really that fast and really that simple. It's just boom, boom, you're there. Same thing with the sell. Boom, click, and move it. Now, you could also cancel the order altogether and say, I don't wanna do this sell order anymore. There's that little X there, simple, easy. Click on that X and it's canceled. So we've covered market orders and limit orders. Now let's go and do a stop market order, right? Now in this case, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go long, I'm gonna click a mark, I'm gonna click a button, boom. I'm long one contract, right? And you know, if the market, my take profit's gonna be again at 69. So I'm gonna try to sell a contract higher at 69. Now the last part, the last anatomy of a trade, this is anatomy of every trade, a position, a target, and a stop loss. I'm gonna put my stop loss in and it's gonna be a buy stop, I'm sorry, sell stop below the market, right? Because if the market goes against me, you know, I wanna get out at a certain point. So I'm gonna pick 95 even, and everybody, I'm just making these numbers up, so don't, these aren't really real trade ideas, these are just demonstrations. And I'm gonna use the middle mouse button, the middle mouse button of my mouse, I'm gonna click it, and it's gonna place a stop market order. And then I wanna demonstrate the close button also, because now that we have two working orders and a position, I'm gonna click that close button. It's gonna cancel the working order. So it'll cancel the stop, it'll cancel this limit automatically, and it'll flatten my position. Think of it as a panic button, really. But I mean, hopefully you're not panic trading, but just click on that, boom, and everything's a reset. Everything's done, I'm flat, all my working orders are done. Let's just go ahead and start a brand new strategy, right? So I'm gonna start with none. I'm gonna hit that drop down menu. I'm gonna hit custom. This window pops up. It doesn't look like it does a lot, but it does an awful lot. So at the top part is where I could set up my brackets and my trailing stop. And the bottom part is kind of, these are more 
um, I don't know, fancy techniques. You could reverse if you get stopped as an example, or you could reverse your position if, if it hits your profit target as an example. But we're gonna cover the top part right now. So let's say I wanna do a simple bracket. Simple bracket's very common. In other words, I'm gonna place a trade and I'm gonna put my hands in the pot in my pocket. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna set up my, my profit target first. Orders two. Profit target is going to be, uh, we'll just make this up. We'll just call, say a 10, we'll call it, uh, we'll call it 10, we'll call it 10. And then stop loss, we'll also call 10. The stop strategy, we'll leave that alone for now. And I'm just gonna hit okay. And you can see ATM strategy, custom, it's right there. So it's ready to go, right? If it's none, there's, not, there's no ATM. If it's custom, it's gonna be there. And I could save it also, just like I saved XYZs as a special custom indicator. But let's go ahead and see what happens here. I'm just gonna go buy a contract at the market and it immediately does a whole bunch of stuff. One, it does my market order, right? So I'm long two at 97. It sends a profit target also to the exchange at 66.9950. That represent that's what I, that's what I told it to do. And then it also puts that same stop loss in that I told it to do, right? So all three things are done simultaneously. And not only that, now I could kind of like I don't have to do anything, right? If my profit target gets hit, this uh, I'll be flat and the stop will automatically cancel. Alternatively, if the stop gets hit, the profit target will automatically be canceled. I'll be flat. Let's start with the with the tricky one. When you want to close your platform, the best way to do it is from the control panel here. That's that rectangular thing I'm wiggling around. But click on that X and then it'll prompt you, you sure you want to close it and it'll memorize everything you have. What you're seeing right now, it'll memorize the location of the windows, it'll memorize the data, what you have on your market analyzer and the whole thing. So when you log back in again, it'll show up exactly as you remember it. So that's number one, make sure, don't close the windows individually and then close the application because the last thing it'll see is all the windows are closed and it'll think that's how you wanna open it. But I'm gonna move down to export, right? And, the, and you get three options, right? You get backup file, historical data, or ninja add-on script. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on that backup file, right? Oops. Please close all account connections prior to exporting a backup. What this is telling me is I have to disconnect from my data feed. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try it again and go to tools. I'm gonna click backup file. And now it gives me export backup file options, database, configuration files, all of this stuff. And there's workspaces right there. So boom, I wanna make sure that's checked, that workspace checked. Then it says, please remind me to backup my files every, I could set a reminder. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna hit that export button there we go. And then boom, you hit that save button and it'll place it uh, right there. I'm just gonna hit save. You know, so this is a good way to transfer work from one computer to a new computer as well. So basically you have that backup file, you put it on a USB drive or put it in the cloud, and then you can download it to the new computer and back up all your work into that new computer so you don't have to recreate everything. Right, absolutely, absolutely.